You join me where we left off in the previous project. I haven't had too much time to break in the new steady rest, but so far I'm really happy with how it's performing. Now one thing a lot of people commented in that video were the welds. Now personally, as long as they hold the two parts together, I've never really been too interested in welding, or really what they look like, but even I can admit there's definitely room for improvement. Now if you were to ask me what my favourite type of welding is, it would be JB Weld. Now if that ain't the most perfect weld you've ever seen, but my second favourite type of welding would be TIG, even though I haven't done it in 7 or 8 years now, and what I did do was just goofing around in a high school shop class. In unrelated news, I've also bought a TIG torch. Ok, before getting too far into that, let's quickly talk about my welder. I've had a few people ask me what welder I have, and is it any good? Well, what I have here is a Unimig Viper 182. My nickname for it is simply Blink 182. Now this one can do stick, gas or gasless MIG. Some of the cheaper ones that I've seen in stores are gasless only since they don't have the internal parts to actually feed the gas. Now this one isn't an industrial welder, but it's definitely at the top end for a hobby grade machine. And on the whole, I'm pretty happy with it. I've never had any issues with it, and it's been able to weld pretty much anything that I've thrown at it. Although it should be said, it's a little bit difficult for me to compare welders, since the only other one that I've ever owned was a cheap $50 transformer style one. It was either the electrode would stick because the current was too low, or you could have it so the current would strike an arc, and it would then burn through anything thinner than 3mm. I'm really happy that I don't have to use it anymore, so anything better than that is definitely an improvement. Now the good thing about this machine is that it comes with these 3550 connectors. It's intended so you can swap around the polarity and connect a stick welder, but it also allows me to connect up this TIG torch, which also has a 3550 connector. Now at this point, I'm sure some of you are thinking, well this isn't a TIG machine, and you'd be right in thinking that. But if we do set it up correctly, we should be able to get it to TIG and hopefully produce some nice welds. Now the TIG torch that I bought sent me back about 100 bucks, plus another 300 for a cylinder of argon, and that includes the deposit. So pretty much when I run out of argon, I think it's about $100 and they'll just swap me in for another bottle. I already had a tank of MIG gas on hand, which I think is a mix of 80% argon and 20% CO2, but that just won't do for TIG. TIG needs 100% argon. So before I was even able to look at welders, I was already looking at a $400 investment, and the TIG welders that I saw, well they started at about $600 to $700 and up. And given how little I use the MIG setup, I thought it would be a much better idea to convert this to TIG and then see how much use I actually get out of it before thinking about getting a brand new machine. Of course though there are a few drawbacks to this type of setup compared to buying a purpose built TIG machine. For one, this setup is going to be scratch start only. So to start the arc, I'll have to gently bring it down onto the workpiece, briefly scratch it to actually start the arc. And if I'm not thinking correctly, or if I'm not that cautious, the tungsten is going to stick and it's going to break off, which means it's going to require sharpening. I know the box says it is capable of doing lift starts, but the fact is, the welder isn't capable of doing that, and if I tried to do that, the electrode would simply stick and then break. The gas flow is also going to be all manual, and it's controlled by this knob on the TIG torch. A proper TIG welder should have a foot controller or button which will allow you to start the current as well as start the gas, but here there's going to be none of that. So if I forget to turn on the gas, it means that the electrode is going to burn out and I'm going to have to regrind it. And to also jump on that point, once I turn on the machine, because I am running it like an arc welder, once the machine is on, that tungsten is going to be live, so I have to be extra careful with where I put it. And on a final note, this is going to be DC TIG welding only, 
which means I can weld most stuff that I'd normally weld, except aluminium. You do need AC in order to TIG weld aluminium. However, that shouldn't be much of a problem, because now that I have the argon, I should be able to use the MIG welder with aluminium. Well, I'll try my best, but do bear with me. I haven't TIG welded in 7 or 8 years, and I've only had the TIG welder and argon for about 2 days at this point. Well, not perfect by any stretch, but it is a weld. You can probably see in the middle where I contaminated the tungsten. I dipped the electrode into the molten steel and it had to be reground. Let me try that again. Well, definitely not as straight as I was hoping for, but it's definitely nicer than my MIG welds. I definitely need some more practice, but it does go to show that you can TIG on a stick welder. What I need to do now are some quick and small projects in order to get some practice with the welder. In the intervening day between the last two shots, I managed to misplace and actually break off the end of one of the ceramic cups. So I think the first project should be to make a holder for the TIG torch. I want the overall style to be similar to the MIG torch holder, but I also want it to be able to be moved around a lot more easily. I'll be making it out of some 3mm steel, but before I start making it in steel, we can start making it out in CAD, or I guess cardboard aided design. If you've been following Project Binky for the past few years, you'll know all about CAD. Doing it this way is just a lot easier and quicker to test it out and then bend parts and then make the modifications that need to be made. A lot easier than doing it in steel and then finding out that it doesn't work. And once I have the shape that I'm happy with, I can sketch it out on the steel. And this can all be precision eyeballed, this part does not need to be super precise. And once I'm happy with the shape, I'll take down any sharp edges. And with that done, I can now heat it up and then bend it to shape. And the bend's a little bit uneven, so I'll quickly heat it up again, and then bend it back so it looks a little bit nicer. And with the holder done, I can now decide on how I want to hold it down. If I had a steel top table, or a welding table, I'd simply use a big magnet. But since I don't, and since I want to be able to move it around quite easily, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it to one of those spring clamps. A spring clamp easily holds onto the workbench, and it will also allow me to easily move around the holder. Ah, uh, looks like I had the current set a little bit too high for this type of work. And that is the holder done. 
It might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I think it's going to be really functional. And whilst I get it painted, we can now move on to the second tool. And that's going to be some way to suspend the cables, to help keep the weight off my arm to make using it a little bit easier, and help better route and manage the cables. I'll be starting off with a piece of half inch rod. To the top of the rod, I'll be mounting one of those swivel rings, and that should let the cable move around. And to the ring, I'll be attaching one of those carabiners to hold the cables. Now the swivel is plated in some sort of chrome, so I probably can't weld it directly. So what I'll do is I'll connect it to a coupler, which is going to be a lot easier than removing the chrome. Nah, I'll definitely need some more practice welding round stuff too. And that is the top half done. Now all I need is to find a clamp. Okay, so I've just been to the hardware store and I've bought myself one of those $5 50mm G clamps. The original plan was to weld the rod to the side of the clamp and leave it at that. Nice, quick and simple. But obviously I wasn't looking too closely at the clamp when I bought it because what I thought was steel actually turns out to be cast iron. And welding to cast iron is, well, more involved than I was planning for for this project. So after a bit of a rethink, I've decided to screw the clamp into the rod and simply use the clamp upside down. And of course this turns out to be more complicated than it really needs to be because as it turns out these threads aren't metric. That thread is fine pitch 5 sixteenths and I don't have a tap for that. So instead of actually tapping a thread I'll simply weld it directly. And after another round of paint, here's what I have. The TIG torch holder turned out really great. It does a great job at holding the torch and it looks really nice too. It does look a bit odd connected to the clamp, but it does work really well. And the cable holder is a really good addition too. I can better route the cables underneath the desk and when needed, I can pull through the length of cable needed when I need to weld. Plus I can also move it around as needed. And it does a great job of taking the weight off the cable, and it makes TIG welding a little bit easier. And that's about it for now. You'll definitely see the TIG torch pop up in videos soon, but for the moment, I need a lot more practice, and hopefully the welds will get a little bit better. Thanks for watching.